I thought I would just have a little skim around my prime real estate area of my summertime where who is and what they're up to just quickly and give you a feel for the top shelf and the rest of the area at 27 degrees in deep shade because my sensor is in a place where hardly any wind gets to and it's the shadiest of all and I have 43% humidity and that is with a slight breeze yesterday it was super windy and my goodness I was chasing around with a sprayer every hour actually a little bit more than that because once I got done in one area I went around and did it all over again so I was a bit frazzled to be honest but I just thought look a real estate tour initially was a couple of months ago so this would be the top shelf and no I can't reach I'm actually stood on a little staircase <laughs> but up here I have things like my dendrobium Alexandre that is completed its growth and it's now just hanging on, resting, doing not much. Um, it has a couple of little dried up sheaths in the middle, but it's not their time yet. My Maxima is in the back here, Catlia Maxima. She has completed one new growth, but this one grew out through the winter. So I'm kind of like hoping that there's another one down there that is actually showing signs of movement. I would like to have two growths again this year that are blooming. And then here I have my samurai. This is something that uh, came to me that looked like something the cat dragged in backwards. Awful, awful plant. So this cane here is the one for last year. And it hasn't done anything since then. And then back there, right in the back here, I have my Yokosuka story. And it's growing a wonderful new growth. But we're not going to go into each individual plant but just to give you an idea who is where but there's a great growth coming right there and here I have a burana twist not doing very well but we have seen in my augmentation with the silicon we saw that I got a new growth on this piece here and now there's another new growth down there coming up as well my amethyst Lelia Amethyst here. Yeah, great. Doing a great thing with this new growth. Still waiting, hoping one day. And then in the back here, tucked away, far from any other plant that should be affected, not touching anything, is one of my um, orange nuggets. The growth is coming along nicely. The speckles are still there. There is nothing there that's going to take that away, I don't think. Right here in front of me, pride of place in shade, is my pastoral innocence. There's a fabulous new growth right here. And there's another bulge down in here. I'm not sure it's going to do anything. But it has, certainly hasn't stopped. And here I have a Zygonesia Murasaki, right here. And it did bloom for me, surprisingly, because it wasn't supposed to. Two years ago it bloomed for me, which was amazing. Since then, nothing, but it's grown a couple of new growths. This one is the one for this year. It's doing fairly well in its setup. And now I've brought it outside from my dining area, which is much more protected so that I can actually see if more light will induce some blooms. I think for this growth it's too late because they normally push a flower spike at the same time as new growths come. And this is already far, far too mature, so to speak, for any spike to develop. And here is a little dendrobium. I don't think this is gy yeah, this is gyrec horn. And in the back is my other orange nugget, the one that we did the treatment on with a copper fungicide. It's going down. The new growths are doing really well. 
but then so did the other ones last year so you see they're they're doing really well getting nice and plump and big and coming up through but yeah last year it was doing the same thing and still it got spots and then here's my epidendrum multiforme crossed with capricornu still working on opening those flowers i have some opened but not all so this is the top shelf let's go one stage below one floor down is my golden peacock in bloom i have this here because i want to enjoy the flowers from the living room i have down here a lot of the like the Grasso, Grassavola crosses and uh, they're a little bit more protected just because they're not as strong plants that I would like to expose to too much stress. Got a new growth coming there, that's great. And my Francis Fox is also developing beautifully. The roots are pushing down and I have another new growth coming. And then back there I have the Lelia of Beach and this is going to be interesting. Lelia of H is in the back, but let's look at this. This is my Tokonaga, Roy Tokonaga Dendrobium that is now finished blooming. It's already maturing its next growth. And uh, for now, it can go up to the top shelf as long as I have space and it's not touching anything. So there's the Vage here in the back. This one. It's done, it's completed its new growth, so it can stay there. My other Francis Fox is right here. We need to put that into a pot more securely. My Lancifolium, Prostechia Lancifolium, is coming on a treat. I already have all the new growths coming up that are actively growing despite it pushing out the blooms. I love seeing that when an orchid does it. You can expect blooms and there's a lot going on. It's all fun and games. Darwinara Brute Blue. Here. I got the sheath developing nicely. Beautiful sheath. Whether it's going to amount to anything, I don't know. And then here is Iricolor. With its very, very slow growing new growth. Right there. And here is the Intermedia Cross Eclandiae. Uh, we saw also in the orchid augmentation video with the silicon doing fine. That's where it lives for now. Here is an Oncidium varicosum baldin. Its new growths are doing really well. I hope I get some flowers one day. It's taking forever to bloom, but yeah, can, it was a really weak plant when I got it. My Leptotis is now resting after it's blooming, but I do have some roots down there developing. Moscom and its sheath doing well here in the shade. Hibiki is in the back here and until Hibiki doesn't bloom out you see all the buds coming here. It's not going to come forward it's used to its spot and here I have in a very protected area the Neostylus Lusneri Blue that we decapitated. That's the piece in the pot doing quite well getting more and more firm in the pot my tug test is absolutely yeah i can feel it's holding on to those pebbles down there that's awesome and this is holdenii this is where holdenii lives it's been a candidate for the tea method to get roots on its cutting doing really well the growth has now matured this is the mother plant the cutting of course not being potted up yet but it's doing really well roots are going down fantastic and then here I have Lobata cerula, which completed, matured its new growth right here. And now I can see that the roots are forming and going down into the pot. So that's fantastic. Here I have my Tetratonia living in the middle and that completes the middle shelf. But let's have a look at what's on dangling down from the middle shelf. This is my Parkinsonianum, doing beautifully. Oh, I'm loving this. 
It does live upstairs, but it is at eye level in my blooming alley. And then we go down here where I have Peggy Ruth Carpenter busting out some new growths like there's no tomorrow. Roots going down into the media. Appreciating that. And here are all my little epicat layers in the corner. There's the Kyoguchi, Happy Holiday, and um, what have we got? Magical Wand. Who are you? Hingsing Gold Coast, of course. So there's new growth on all of them, progressing and maturing. And right next to all of that is my Maasai Red, looking a bit scraggly, but that is because it has to live outside. Because of its size, I can't carry it unless I have this contraption underneath. I need to do some reshuffling here, but for now, this is where it is. And I hope that you can see how the Tolumnias are all in the back there, all in a row. We'll do a video on those one day. They need some maintenance. I got all my Tolumnias hanging there. And this is my regular loose Neary hanging in his basket. Hopefully with some blooms on the way one day. That'd be nice. And let's go over to the right. Tortile is hanging out. Roots are doing their thing. This is great. And then next to Tortilla, I have Seidenfadenia mitrata with a little bit of some blooms. <laughs> oh well, we take what we can get. But I'm going to pull her down and give a better update on her to show you that some of the roots are growing, some are extending. Very important. And then on the lower shelf of this one is where my Chantilly Lace lives. Back here is the Atra Walker. Here is Little Stars. This is the Velotina. There we've got Schilleriana, Catlea Schilleriana. There is a Clandie in the back. I'm hoping for some progress there. Right in the back is my Lelia Zip. Eh, let me get there. This one right here is Lelia Zip. New growths are mature, so it's not doing anything. And then right here under the fan, you can see that's my little Catlea Rex Juvenile. Lower shelf, protected for the time being, is Lelia perinii. Got its new growth developing nicely. And then here is our Escacentrum ampuyathea that was potted up in a Harial Roots video. Darwinara Blue, my Renantanda Sunrise, across with Imshutiana, doing really well growing lots and lots of roots straight down into the pot i love it and then here is oh sorry this this one back here is kristen soniana green light here is darwinara blue doing really well still working on the shot glass method from brian of artwork and orchids and then uh, kristen soniana vietnamica right here Ah, just working on root production, which I will take any day, every day. Underneath Peggy Ruth Carpenter and Masai Red, I have a Schomborkia growing, trying to establish her into the Lekka method, growing new growths, waiting for the roots. Back there I have my Phalaenopsis Storianopsis Purple Gem, my Paraphalaenopsis Labucensis, and I'm watching that root sticking out because that's going to be taken and put into a pot one day, but it's doing well. My little Harpophila lives right there. Its new growth is coming on a treat. My Dimophorcus loei lives down here. And my Poly Polystachys is right there. Another one where the root needs to be addressed. Spicerianum is right in front of it. And then Zelemnia midas giving this little shelf a pop of color and I can see it from where I'm sitting in the living room. Right down here I have the Dendrobium or Unibulbum Munificum. It's doing nothing after it's matured its new growth, that's normal. And here I have, I believe this is my chocolate mint, mint chocolate, the other way around. 
And then there's my other Leopoldii in the back. You can see there. And that is my Aranguensis. And then all my little seedlings that for the first time in two years are actually doing something except one. This one down here is slack. It's not doing much except for roots that are still there, which is awesome. So there is still sign of life and we shall expect some activity soon. But all the other little ones, they're doing really, really well. And then my Tillandsia, which is about to bloom. Normally lives on the eye level shelf, but I had to bring it down so that we could get to see the other plants in the back. And on the lower level here, I have like a Ciliaris growing that's in bud, my Denfels, all, a lot of light, very warm space there for them. They're getting new growths. I have here my Citrina that is in bloom. So far the spike is still facing uh, away from me, but I want the buds to open uniformly so I don't maneuver it around much. And I have the Gyrac Kiku in the back there with new growths as well. And this is the Guatemalensis doing really well, living down here for now, getting acclimatized in with the higher light after moving it out of the dining area. New growths there. And here's my Neophanesia falcata, chucking out roots like there's no tomorrow. A lot of spraying needed on that one. And then we have the two little Leopoldii sharing their community pot here. This is where it lives for now. I took it down off the top shelf just so that the new growths can grow in peace and quiet and not get singed by the sun. I have a Memoria Christensoniana right here, which was a gift from Luca Orchidin. My generic no ID on Sidium over there. My Pandurata lives down here for now. And then all my little Epidendrum crosses that are, some of them are in bloom. Which was one of the reasons I wanted to do a quick tour of this area. Because I have quite a few things in bloom in a beautiful little corner here. They're about to go over and you can see these black bugs here. This is a new one for me. They're dead. I treated them this morning, but it is taking the flowers out quite quickly. I don't know what they are. They were on my Ionopsis popcorn haruri as well, but I don't like them and they're new to me. I've never seen these things before. And here's the Rene Marquez cross with Digbiana and my beautiful Stelogeny spike, which has a fragrance of a dusty room. Much more powerful than the Lime Bay, but so obvious. That's what this fragrance is. I can be here and that's what I smell. So it's, it's amazing. I'm watching like a hawk for bugs here. I don't want them to be taken out by these black things, whatever they are. To complete the tour here on my right in my prime real estate is my fires. Cranking out some new growths. Very, very pleased to see that. And here is my Dendrobium tetragonum. It's finished blooming, finally. So as it's not doing anything, I've left it very shaded. And once the new growth start, we are going to start exposing it back more to the left over here where the big shelf is and uh, give it more light. My little nobly no ID is starting to lose all its blooms. And when that's done, it's going out to the hot section, the highest light section of my terrace. Here is the wild cat doing absolutely beautifully. Look at that. No fragrance, but gorgeous. And next to that is Area Hyacinthoides. I'm enjoying these blooms for the time being. And in front of that, as its neighbor, is the Plectromenthos caudatus. We potted that up together. There is still a little bit of give, but not much. It's also starting to root in really nicely. It, I can feel it grabbing, that's great. And behind that, I have the little Ascocentrum Christensonianum. 
keeping it well well protected taking a leaf off here <laughs> might as well it's not growing many more roots for me at this point in time I live in hope and a little Tulumnia right up here a little straggler because she is going to bloom and I don't want to have those blooms bashing against the wall where it normally lives and then just up here are my mounts you've seen this area before we do have another cluster of gorgeousness here Victoria Regina back with some more beautiful blooms the color is almost true on the camera just consider it a little bit darker and that would be the color but it's very close beautiful and just to quickly wrap up this little tour of prime real estate here is my Lelia crispa I have several summer blooming fowls right on the bottom here let's have a look at Tabasuco Tex lovely jubbly two more buds developing and then I have the giraffe over here with more spikes coming this season that's great I have two little plants at the base growing fabulous developing nicely and grinning at us in the background there is Cornusurvi Chatteladei or Lady Chatterley. <laughs> doing well love it this one jumped into the self-watering method never looked back roots are extending it's gorgeous and down below of everything else are my paphiopedalums I have a speciosa violacea tucked in the corner there she is being protected from any of the harsher elements like a little bit more light but the new leaf is growing and it's looking quite healthy whilst the next one to the left of it there it's kind of kinky <laughs> uh, it's a leaf that grew during the winter stopped and then started and well you know that you know how it goes and uh, the new leaf is looking good but here are all my little paths they are always in shade bright shade if I may say but no direct Sun there's a leaf dying back there on my Bellatulum but I'm waiting for it to come off on its own and everybody else is just hanging out so everybody thank you so very very much for joining me this is what my alley looks like does it look crowded nah it doesn't look crowded but this is basically how I've set it up for the rest of the months until possibly October I've got some hanging up over here that now can't take the hot hot Sun that we're experiencing so yeah I'm surrounded at least in this space this is my piece of heaven I love it absolutely love it so thank you everybody I appreciate you joining me and we'll go on to another location Thierry says hi or be quiet or can we get over it and I'll be moving on to another location and let's have a look then what's going on and how the setup is in other areas have a wonderful day everybody I really appreciate you watching this video and take care bye mm -hmm.